Welcome to another video. In this video, uh, we will prove a very important property. Uh, this property is important because it is used in many quantum computing algorithms. And this property states that uh, a normal matrix is always diagonalizable by a unity similarity. So uh, before we prove this, let me explain some basic concept. That is, what is a normal matrix? What is diagonalization? And what is diagonalization by unity similarity? And what are the advantages of diagonalization? So let's start. So our question number one is, uh, what is a normal matrix? So, um, a matrix N, which is a scale matrix of complex entries, is normal if N uh, conjugate transpose time N is equals to uh, N times N conjugate transpose. And this definition looks uh, very similar to the definition of unitary matrices. But there is one important thing missing. In case of unitary matrices, we say that this thing is equal to identity. However, in case of normal matrices, this thing uh, may or may not be equal to identity. So example of normal matrices are number one, obviously uh, unitary matrices. So unity matrices are normal matrices because uh, in unity matrices uh, this definition is always fulfilled. Secondly, Hermitian matrices are also normal matrices. So when we prove uh, this theorem, we are proving this theorem for uh, normal matrices. Hence, we will proving this theorem for unitary matrices as well as for Hermitian matrices. So we know the, that the Hermitian matrix definition is that uh, H uh, conjugate transpose is equal to H. And by this definition, it's easy to see that Hermitian matrices are indeed normal matrices. Similarly, uh, skew symmetric matrices are also a normal matrices. So we can say uh, H uh, conjugate transpose is equals to minus H in this case. So now the second important question that what is diagonalization? So what is diagonalization? So diagonalization is uh, basically decomposing a matrix into three special matrices. So we have a matrix A. If we decompose that matrix, if this matrix is decomposable into three different matrices, then we say that matrix A is diagonalizable. So we can decompose this matrix uh, into matrix B times matrix D times matrix P inverse. So what are the matrices P and D? So uh, first um, assume that a matrix A has n different eigenvectors. So eigenvectors of A are eigenvectors of A are linearly independent from each other are linearly independent and equals to uh, E1. This is the first eigenvector of A in any order. And this is the second eigenvector of A. So it has n different linearly independent eigenvectors. And corresponding eigenvalues, so
are uh, lambda 1, lambda 2 to lambda n. Obviously, some of those eigenvalues can be same. So, we have corresponding eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2 to lambda n, where lambda 1 corresponds to eigenvector e1 and lambda 2 corresponds to eigenvector e2 and so on. Then, our matrix P will be matrix in which we place eigenvectors on different column. So, in the first column, we place some eigenvector, any eigenvector. In the second column, we place another eigenvector and so on. There can be any order of eigenvectors in matrix P. So, let's say my first column has eigenvector E1. My second column has eigenvector E2 and so on. My last column is eigenvector En. And their order I can switch if I like, no problem. Now, matrix D must correspond to the order of eigenvectors in matrix P. Matrix P D is a diagonal matrix. That means it has only non-zero entries on the, in the, on the diagonal and rest of the entries of this matrix are all zeros. And the diagonal entries of this matrix are eigenvalues corresponding to the order of eigenvectors in matrix P. So, if we have uh, uh, eigenvector E1 as the first column of matrix P, then the first value of the diagonal of matrix D will be eigenvalue lambda 1 because lambda 1 corresponds to E1. Similarly, second value will be not lambda 3 but lambda 2 because uh, we have placed in the second column uh, E2. Similarly, last eigenvalue in diagonal in the uh, matrix D will be lambda n and other than diagonal R entries will be 0. So, this is our diagonalization of matrix A. So far in this video, we have answered that um, what are normal matrices and what is diagonalization. Now, the second, uh, third question is that what is diagonalization by unity similarity? Uh, how come this diagonalization is different than our typical diagonalization? So, question number three is what is diagonalization by unity similarity uh, this is more or less same like uh, our typical diagonalization but with one key difference in typical diagonalization we could ha we could have uh, many different kind of matrices here but in this case uh, matrix here will be normal matrix and then for normal matrix we can diagonalize it by a unitary matrix times a diagonal matrix and because it is a unitary matrix so we don't have to take a uh, unitary inverse we, because in case of unitary matrices inverse is equals to a conjugate transpose so we, we replace inverse by conjugate transpose and this is our uh, diagonalization by a uh, unity similarity so a uh, key difference is that we have unity matrix here because in this case, our eigenvectors are linearly independent and also orthonormal. So, in this case, uh, eigenvectors of n, so uh, n eigenvectors, in that case, they were only linearly independent. Here, they are linearly independent. and also orthonormal because when we have orthonormal columns in any matrix then that matrix become a unitary matrix therefore when we place orthonormal eigenvectors in matrix p then the matrix p becomes unitary matrix so unitary matrix once again has eigenvectors 
but they are orthonormal. So we have here E1 to uh, En, but they are orthonormal. So we don't have to compute a U inverse. We can just compute a U conjugate transpose as an inverse. And D matrix is same that was previously in the uh, typical definition. So it has eigenvalues lambda 1 corresponding to eigenvector E1 and so on. Our fourth question was that, uh, what are the advantages of diagonalization? So, what are the advantages of diagonalization? So that's our question number four. So the answer to this question is that there are several advantages of diagonalization. Uh, for example, uh, if we have to compute, uh, uh, let's say we have a matrix uh, N, and we have to compute N raised to power 100. Uh, by diagonalization, we can compute that very quickly as compared to other methods. Uh, similarly, if we have to compute uh, e raised to power n. By diagonalization, we can compute uh, either constants raised to power n or maybe either constants raised to power i n very quickly. Similarly, if we have um, if we have to compute n inverse, we can compute very quickly using diagonalization uh, as compared to our typical methods. Uh, we can compute maybe cos uh, n or uh, cos of a matrix or maybe a sine of a matrix or tan of a matrix using diagonalization. Uh, we can also compute um, uh, factorial of a matrix. So we can compute n factorial using diagonalization and so on. But the key advantage uh, we usually have is uh, these one. So let me explain that why computing n hundred is much faster using diagonalization as compared to computing using typical methods. So let's say n is normal matrix. So we can write n is equals to uh, u uh, d uh, u conjugate transpose. And I want to compute n hundred. So first, let me explain what is n raised to power two. n raised to power two is equals to u d uh, u conjugate transpose times uh, u d u conjugate transpose because I have repeated uh, same thing twice because I have to compute n square and I can simplify this by uh, because u conjugate transpose times u is identity matrix so this is identity matrix hence I will get u uh, d square times u conjugate transpose. Similarly, we can say that uh, n raised to power 100 will be equals to u d raised to power 100 times u conjugate transpose. So instead of computing n raised to power 100, I can compute u d power 100 times u conjugate transpose. And this is faster because a computing power of a diagonal matrix is very straightforward. You don't have to uh, multiply matrix with anything. You can only power individual entries of diagonal. So assume that I have a matrix D that has n entries like uh, this is D1, this is D2, and then this is the last entry of the matrix Dn. So it is n by n matrix and all of the entries are zero because it is a diagonal matrix and I have to compute D100. Then I only have to come, I ha only have to give power to individual entries of diagonal and then I have uh, D raised to power 100. So I have D100 here, D1100 here, I have D2100 here and I have Dn100 here and my uh, D100 is ready. So uh, this method 
of computing powers is uh, very faster as compared to methods in which we compute power either by scaling matrices, by scale and multiply kind of algorithms, or by uh, multiplying a same matrix n times with, with itself. Similarly, uh, I can compute a scale root of matrix using diagonalization. So I can compute n scale. So if I have to compute n scale, it will be equals to uh, u uh, d scale uh, times u u transpose conjugate. So now we have answered basic questions that what is normalization, what is diagonalization, and what is diagonalization by uh, similarity transformation. And we are ready for the, our proof. So let me clear the board and then I will prove that uh, normal matrix is always diagonalizable uh, by unity similarity.